Here are the tools for making the cross loop. A tape measure, two pins used as fids, a marking sharpie, scissors, a short wire fid about 12 inches long, a long wire fid about 24 inches long, two 20 inch lengths of whipping twine, and a homemade soft fid. The first step is to cut and mark a segment of Dyneema rope which will become our splicing line. For a loop with a finished length of 10 inches, I've estimated a cut length of 60 inches of Dyneema rope. Measure 30 inches from the end of the Dyneema rope. Make a mark. This will be the midpoint of the loop line. Cut the rope at 60 inches. Make marks one inch on each side of the midpoint. This two inch section is where the end berries will overlap. For the final marks, mark each leg at 14 inches from the midpoint. These two locations, which I will call the pass-throughs, are where the line will pass through itself. Now we are ready to make the two loops. Open a hole at each pass-through being careful to make sure that there are an even number of strands on each side of the opening. The next step is to run a loop of whipping twine inside each leg from the legs pass through to the mark one inch from the midpoint on the opposite leg. These loops will be used to pull the wire fid through each leg after the two loops are made. This extra step will greatly ease inserting the fid in each leg. Be sure that each loop of twine runs past the midpoint to the one inch mark of the opposite leg. This creates the core berry overlap. Here again, the twine goes past the midpoint and exits at the one inch mark on the opposite leg. Next, make the first loop by passing one leg through the other. Here I am enlarging the pass-through, making sure that the twine exits at the hole. Insert the short fid through the pass-through. Capture the other leg in the fid and pull it through the pass-through. This makes the first loop.
Pull the leg through so that the second pass through is beyond the first pass through and outside of the loop. I now enlarge the second pass through, again making sure that the twine loop exits from the pass through. The next step is to invert the second pass through. Insert the short wire fib through the pass through, capture the end of the same leg, and pull the leg through, rolling the line and inverting the pass through. Next, capture the standing part between the two pass-throughs in the short fid, and then run the fid through the inverted pass-through. Be sure that the standing part passes through in the same direction as did the leg. This will undo the inversion. Roll out the inversion. The second loop is now made. The next steps will bury the ends. First, enlarge one loop so that the midpoint and both bury exits are exposed in the loop. Next, the long wire fid will be inserted into the loop. I begin by opening up the line at each berry exit point. Insert the long wire fid into the twine loop. Pull out the slack, insert the fit into the line, and pull the fit through. Trust me, this is far easier than pushing the fit through the line. Insert the soft fid into the wire fid. Pull the soft fid through the line. Use the short wire fid to bury the line end into the soft fid. Taper the line end and pull it back into the soft fid. Pull the soft fid and line into the berry. The berry will be tight at two points, 
First, where the berry enters the throat of the pass-through, and next, where it exits the cover. Pull the berry tight to bring it tight against the pass-through. Now milk the cover over the berry. Be sure to grab the leg opposite the cover. Do not grab the loop. If you do, milking will pull out the berry. Cut the core where it exits the cover. Measure back two inches. Taper the berry end. To reduce bulk, I have removed half or six of the strands at the two inch mark. I then taper the remaining six strands over the last one inch. Milk the cover and bury the core. The first leg berry is now done. To begin the next leg berry, expand the small loop to move the midpoint and berry exits into the loop. Repeat the processes of the first berry. Pull the long wire fit into the loop with the twine loop. I have removed some video. Before I pull the soft fid through the loop, I open up the strands where the soft fid enters the loop. Pull the soft fid through the loop. Again, I have removed some video. Insert the berry end into the soft fid and pull it through the loop leg. As I've shown this before, I will skip over the video here. Pull the berry tight. Cut the berry to length. Mark and taper the last two inches. Milk the cover over the berry. Your cross loop is now done. The finished loop length is just over 10 inches. The 40% added to account for shrinkage was just about right.